Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Dylan Droke from Digital Native, and today we're going to be looking at Asus inside of Octane 2020. And now I got a simple scene set up here. I just have one of the mountains from the next pack that we're going to be releasing soon. And if we look over here, you'll see the tone map type we have here, and we can click through that. And here we'll see the Asus preview. Now, I have noticed that Octane has not really implemented the open color I.O. into this workflow here, so we can't really adjust what this preview really looks like inside of Cinema 4D. Um, if I go here and open up the camera imager, you'll see that we have this exposure here, and we can crank that up some and we'll get some changes, but if we play with the gamma, nothing is actually going to happen. So now this is true for um, Asus and the HDR in, uh, sorry, HDR linear in the LDR and HDR. We still have the ability to change the gamma, but once we hop into these other previews, it doesn't really do anything at all. So that's kind of a big issue here I'm just gonna reset these so given the fact that we can't really play with Asus inside of Cinema 4D our only real option is to continue to export our images and then tweak them in post so as far as I know um, they have implemented some type of color management into the standalone version. As you can see here, you can select your display color profile. And while this is not open color I.O., from what I've been reading, there's no implementation of something like this in the Cinema 4D plugin. So until we get that updated, we're going to have to work with what we got here. But let's see what we can do. So if we want to render Asus... First of all, everything has to do with this render buffer type here. So if we check here, we have 8-bit deprecated, which is going to be our low dynamic range 8-bit image. Float tone mapped, this will be HDR. And then float linear, that's HDR linear. And then obviously linear ASUS will be ASUS. So this is really going to determine what your final image is going to look like. If we choose ASUS here, you will see that we get a new drop down here and it allows us to save out the ASUS container and we also have an option for compression which I'm just leaving at none for now because why not. Now it's important to note that when you are saving an ASUS file it's actually going to save two files because we have this export here and then we also have to have this export enabled so keep that in mind um, this will automatically export an ASUS EXR file, which is what I'm going to be calling it for the rest of this tutorial. So anything that has been exported out of this slot here will be called, I'm just going to be calling it ASUS EXR just to make it easy. So, and now I've actually exported all of these out and we're going to get a chance to see how each of them kind of react within ASUS and I'm going to be using After Effects so if I hop over here you'll see I have my ASUS export which came from the normal save path and then we have this EXR which came from the other save path that you mentioned before also have my linear image HDR and the LDR 8-bit so let's take these over into After Effects and see what we can do. I'm going to grab this EXR file. Okay, now if you watched my previous ASUS tutorial, we're going to do a few steps here again that I mentioned previously. We're going to go to Main and Preserve RGB. And then we're going to want to go down here and change this to 32 bits and we're going to be working in ASUS CG with a linearized working space 
Okay, so those are the first few steps we want to do to set this up. I'm going to put this in a new composition. And you want to make sure that Use Display Color Management is unchecked. So now we want to do our conversion. So let's go ahead and put Open Color I.O. using an adjustment layer. And we'll need to load in. If you still need to download files. the Asus config files, go ahead and check the description. I'm going to have a link below. Um, so next thing we want to do, um, if you check back here, you will see that we are rendering in Asus 2065. So for our input here, which is already set, should be Asus 2065. And now our output space is going to be Asus CG. Then let's create our output. And now we want to go from Asus CG to sRGB. You can also do Rec. 709. You're going to get a different result, but it's all up to you. So now here we are. We've um, converted everything through Asus CG, and we're getting a nice image here. Um, I've already went through and input everything for the other files here. So with the low dynamic range for our input space, you're going to want to put in an input um, you're going to want to put in a generic sRGB texture and to get that you're going to want to go to input generic and there it is sRGB texture this will be the same input for the high dynamic range and then moving over to linear much like the last tutorial I did on Asus we used a linear profile so you'll find that in the utility right here and then for Asus, now we have, I have two Asus files here. So this is actually the image that came from the normal save path right here. And when I import that into Asus using the same thing we did before, Asus 2065 we get a dark image. And with some color adjustments there, we can start to get it more accurate as to what we were seeing before. So, and now we can see that there are subtle differences between this normal Asus save output and the Asus EXR. Of course, it doesn't come in right away. Don't know if that could be to some some of the input spaces here. It's kind of strange. I figured, you know, it's Asus. We rendered Asus, so input should be Asus. But I found that this EXR works great. It looks really nice. But that's how we would put each of these different image types into Asus. If you watch my previous tutorial, this should already be pretty self-explanatory. Now you'll notice some uh, differences between the images here. Um, not really much of a difference between the first three. Um, main difference comes when we start using these ACES files. You'll notice the colors are a lot stronger. I think they look a lot nicer. Um, it's a great starting point to work on this image especially this the sun because I used you know a um, HDRI that was at sunset and if we go back here we get this kind of green tones that are kind of all throughout the image and over here we get the the purple kind of hues with the orange highlights which you'd expect from a sunset so this is looking really nice I've been liking the results personally have been liking the results from the Asus EXR a lot better.
So now I've uh, stacked these against each other so we can get a better idea of how they compare. If we look at the low dynamic range, the high dynamic range, and the linear export, they all look pretty similar. Colors overall aren't that impressive. And now with that ASUS container, um, the original save file, it was a bit dark. So adjusting that, I gave it an exposure of 1.5 and a gamma of 1.4, and we started to get an image closer to that EXR export. And now these two look pretty similar. Um, personally feel that the ASUS EXR looks a little better. We get a little more range within the highlights and shadows. Now I did put another image through the same kind of tests. Um, didn't render out a low dynamic range for this one. When I imported the HDR and the normal ASUS file, they were both pretty dark. All of the images looked a little dark, so I did play with the settings a bit. Here you can kind of see what I did to kind of even these images out between each other. Right away you'll see the HDR linear probably has the most saturation right out the gate. Looks pretty good. Um, and the Asus EXR file looks really nice. Um, it doesn't have those weird shadow alterations you're kind of seeing in the grass within the other Asus file. Now for another test, I did see some things online. Um, some people were suggesting that you should try and bump up the gammas in your diffuse textures inside of Octane um, to one. And um, I tried that and rendered out some images here. Um, without any adjustments, we'll notice that the Asus EXR looks the truest. Um, normal Asus, very dark. And the Asus Gamma Plus One, we start to get some more information in there. And now the Asus EXR Gamma Plus One turned out very flat looking and um, a little too exposed. So I then did some adjustments on there, actually turned the gamma down on the Asus EXR <laughs> gamma plus one. God, that's a mouthful. And started to notice some better results. And now the, since the Asus EXR gamma plus one <laughs> was looking a little flat, I did bump that saturation up by 20% just so I could get a better comparison between all four of these. And that one started to look a lot nicer. Now, at the end of the day, um, it was hard for me to really decide between the Asus EXR and Asus EXR Gamma Plus One. Um, they both look really nice. You will notice that there are some color differences within the Gamma Plus One. But overall, I think it's going to come to personal preference. I don't know if bumping the gammas is really going to be something I want to do for every render and I honestly think the normal Asus EXR looks fine. But overall I recommend using that EXR file over the normal save file. Overall everything looked better out of the gate without many adjustments. The Gamma Plus One image overall just seems to have maybe a little more color variation don't know if that could be just due to you know I adjusted the saturation so I think it's gonna come down to personal preference go ahead and try each of these exports yourself each scene is gonna be different depending on your lighting and whatnot so not saying you should follow my adjustments per se but yeah only way to figure this stuff out is for us to just keep beating it to death it's not a lot of documentation out there, so we're all just going to have to work together and get to the bottom of this whole ACES situation. So, In the next tutorial, I'm going to be going over some techniques you can use to scatter some Megascan assets like the images you're seeing here. So if that's something you're interested, go ahead and subscribe. We got lots of fun tutorials coming out soon. And yeah, that'll do it for this one. Go check out our store. We got free stuff in there for you guys to download, start using your projects, and until next time, 
I'll see y'all later. Peace.